Tech Tuesday, proudly serving the greater North Hills area for two years. I'm Liam Spore. Number five, it's winter and I bet you ski club kids are looking to get some new gear to hit the slopes, either with your skis or your face, depending on your skill level. Well, Recon Instruments wants you to tailor to the geek and all you skiers with their Transcend Ski Goggles. These monsters feature a heads-up display system to show speed, altitude, GPS, and all sorts of other stats right in front of your eyes. They can record top speeds and such, and then be downloaded to your computer to track personal records and be compared against other users. Apparently, they will offer more features in later updates to display trail maps, connect with your phone, and record and playback video, and hopefully get some augmented reality things like tracking and live updates. Sad news is wanting to pick these up for this weekend at Seven Springs. It won't be available until fall and will cost upwards of $500. But no price is too high to make you feel more like a helicopter pilot than a snowboarder. Number four, Google has really created a buzz with its recent stab at social networking. That buzz was mainly from all those people freaking out that Google was giving out their personal data to not so close friends automatically. The service automatically made you friends with anyone you sent a few emails to, regardless of those emails were friendly notes or warnings of future restraining orders. Although Google CEO claims that no security was damaged by Buzz, the Texan charged admitting that the testing was terrible and that major changes need to be made. So for now, you will only have to worry about releasing personal data through Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Flickr, and the interweb in general. But luckily, Buzz is gone. I didn't mention MySpace because there's no one left there to steal your info. Number three. Apple is taking a break from flame warring it up with Microsoft to get in a battle with Adobe. Now that the iPad is not getting flash, meaning that the iPhone is probably going to stay flashless as well, Adobe is calling out Apple for being monopolistic and blocking out major sections of the web by restricting flash. They claim that Apple is intentionally logging developers and content providers down into their system of code and distribution, which is a good point. But then Steve Jobs struck back with a gentleman's Adobe is lazy comment and also blamed most of the Mac's crashes on Flash failing. That is not so legit of a point, but still one to be made. There are some say that Flash does not even work on touch devices since it depends on the mouse over hover deal that touching really doesn't do. Apple is depending on HTML5 to become the new Flash, but better, which may become real in the next year or so. Hopefully when this all ends, Adobe will fix up its products to compete with HTML5, the iPad will be able to actually use the entire interweb, and maybe, just maybe, Steve Jobs and Steve Ballmer will make a Rookie Cop Veteran Cop buddy movie. Number two, Alienware is a good, although sometimes tacky company. When they were bought by Dell, some of the guys at the top at Alienware figured that it was only a matter of time before they started making fun colored PCs advertised by singing plumbers. So they jumped ship and started Origin Gaming. Their latest creation is the Eon 18, another not so portable laptop built from the desk up for gaming. It's fully customizable, much like a tower rig, but in a convenient, although massive, laptop body. It can be loaded with three hard drives, two full graphics cards, an i7 core, and eight gigs of RAM. Customization goes for the outside as well, since you can replace the Origin logo with your own text, change the color and the detail color. It's a bit ironic since Dell does that tacky color change option thing, and the Alienware guys left, and then decided to go with the color change thing anyway. And number one. Have you ever read the book 1984? Well, Orwell's vision may be coming true, although a few decades late. A school district is under fire from students, the FBI, and the general public after news broke that they had been remotely activating cameras on school-issued MacBooks. Now, some may think, what's the big deal? Well, did I mention that they were remotely turning on the laptops when they were at home with students, and that a student was photographed without his knowledge in his room with the webcam and brought into the office to get punished for bad behavior at home. Now, I'm not sure about the exact definition of massive invasion of personal privacy, but I think this would work well as an example. The student who was photographed immediately sued the school on behalf of the entire student body. The principal of the school then denied the feature was ever used and only would have been used if the computer was reported stolen and the camera would aid in locating it somehow. Seeing as this reason is total lies based on the fact that IT guys in the school told students reporting the camera's light coming on that it was just a glitch and, oh, the FBI discovered that the feature was used 42 times in the last two years. Expect this thing to completely explode in the near future and most likely kill a lot of dreams of getting free school computers for a lot of schools since the badness possible to happen is enough for a district to avoid it altogether. I really hope that this story stays intact after I file it through the Ministry of Truth. Shout out to Mr. Kane. That's all the news for this week. Check out the latest tech news on YouTube at youtube.com slash techtuesday. Also check out plenty of terrible quality video in any order you choose. See you next Tuesday.